It is our duty to hear and listen to our business community. At last year's fall meeting, we hosted industry panels and we heard directly from our businesses. We noticed a recurring theme. Workforce is our absolute number one biggest challenge. How do you screen for your employees? Just because you have experience on paper that says you did something, it does not mean that that experience actually translates into your work ethic. So the business community spoke and we listened. In fact, it has continued to come up as we meet with employers in the field. Our choice was obvious for the theme for this year's fall meeting. It's a challenge that will define this generation of employees, a challenge that can determine our economic future. What specifically do you want the higher ed to do for you? The skill force out there is dwindling and the skilled labor pool is shrinking. It's a crisis. Recruitment, retention, education, training, Everyone has a stake in this. Our workforce is the backbone of the business community. Today, it's all about closing the workforce gap. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. All right, all right. By the way, did you all see that sun this morning, the sunrise? That was a beautiful red-orange sun this morning. Did you see that? Charles County morning. Charles County morning. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Darrell Brown, Director of Economic Development for Charles County, Maryland. Thank you for being here today. I call to order the 2018 Charles County Economic Development Fall Meeting. I would like to take a moment to thank our event sponsors and partners for their support. We do not take sponsorship lightly, and every year our sponsors come out and support us, and I'd like to give a big round of applause to our sponsors. <laughs> Further, I want to recognize all of our current uh, elected local, county, and state officials in attendance. Please stand to be acknowledged. Please stand. Uh, there, there are a couple in the back there. So thank you for being here. Please be seated. <laughs> Finally, I want to recognize the most important people in the room this morning. Please stand if you are a business owner, for profit or nonprofit aspiring entrepreneur or senior corporate biz business executive. Please stand. Thank you for being here this morning. As I have said in the past, you are our job creators, and today's meeting is about you and all of us. Today's program will begin with brief remarks from Commissioner Davis, Deborah Davis, Unfortunately, uh, Commissioner President uh, Murphy is not able to be with us, but Commissioner Davis will give us a warm war welcome. And, uh, and after she finishes, I will return to the podium for a few, few remarks, and, and then we will start with today's agenda, which is Charles County closing the workforce gap. Please welcome Charles County Commissioner Deborah Davis. The podium is yours. Good morning. You guys get Deborah Davis today, who's in her last 10 days of service to, to you as commissioner. Um, first, the serious business. Um, I'd like you to join me in a moment of silence for the victims of the Tree of Life of the Tree of Life Synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh. Just a, just a couple moments, please. Thank you. Thank you all for attending, and I encourage your participation in today's annual meeting. We all are here because we recognize how important economic development is to our, is to our county, and the participation is increasing. While there's some seats missing, we have our largest registration ever of over 200 businesses. So give yourself a round of applause. 
While we all recognize how important economic development is, today we concentrate on workforce solutions. So please engage and, um, and expand your knowledge regarding workforce solutions. As past chair of Tri-County Council, I recognize how important economic development is for the entire region and how we all work together to, um, to make the region stronger. And, and I have to leave in just a little bit because we're going to our bond rating meeting, uh, bond rating sale, and um, Charles County, for the third year in a row, has a triple triple A bond rating from all three re bond rating agencies. So thank you for your participation in that. And you all know what that means. That means that we get to borrow money to build roads and all and infrastructure throughout the county. We get to do that at a lower rate. By that, we save your taxpayer money and we spend it better. I'd like to also recognize and thank the Economic Development Director Darrell Brown. It has been tough for him for the past four years, if I'm allowed to say. But I'd like to, I like to um, recognize him for his leadership and stay in focus in executing the county's five-year strategic economic development plan. And he didn't do it by himself. So if each of you, if each of the um, other members of the De De Economic Development Department would stand, I'd appreciate it. Darrell, if you would stand. Darrell Brown, Director. Marcia Keith, Deputy Director. Taylor Yule, Redevelopment Manager. Lucretia Freeman Buster, Chief of Business Development. Michelle DeSoto, Economic Research Specialist. Martin Pro, Agricultural Business Development Manager. Lucinia Mundy, Business Development Specialist. Jennifer R Reginald, Marketing Coordinator. Daniela Jorgen, Project Coordinator. Lacey Oliver, Administrative Associate. Margaret Dirk, Durek, BRE Consultant. And last but certainly not least, Kim Mozingo, BRE Consultant. Please give them a big round of applause. And if you haven't had a chance to talk to them, make sure you, you pull them aside and just share what you do and make sure they know who you are. So thanks again. Um, I want to acknowledge that the Economic Development Department has been and continues to be a strong advocate for each of you, for the entire business community, and are valuable advisors to the Board of Commissioners on County Economic Development Matters. Thank you again. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Thank you very much for those very kind words. I'm getting older, so this is the first time I've done this publicly, so there it is. In front of you is the Economic Development's a new annual report, which includes progress by the EDD on various projects and topics as well as county economic development um, demographic information. I draw your attention to pages 9 through 11 of the report on the EDD's milestones. We have made significant progress over the past year. The Greenberg-Gibbons project, Waldorf Station, is moving forward. The county obtained three Federal Opportunity Zone designations submitted an EOI for a proposed new USDA headquarters location in Charles County. And we continue to work with and support the Maryland Airport. More on these topics later in the program. The U.S. Army Reserve's Maryland Training Center is nearly completed. And the Maryland Center for Addiction Treatment is now open. The county has maintained its AAA bond rating, as you just heard Commissioner Davis speak to, and has a $15 million surplus. Our unemployment rate remains at single-digit levels, 4.5% as of August of this year, and our commercial vacancy rate is 8%. This is all good news, and there's more. Jennifer Harris 
the county's <clears throat> public information officer will share with you more good things that's happening in the county. While the county continues to grow its population and remain an attractive place to live, work, and play, we do have our challenges. Retail, for example, is still in flux. I'm sure you have heard about Sears stores closing nationwide. Our Sears survives. However, in light of recent trends, Later this morning, you will hear about our direct retail strategy designed to better position the EDD and the county in a more active role in direct retail attraction and recruitment. We continue to support Indian Head, and I want to thank all stakeholders and partners who participated in a collaborative way to get Velocity Center launched. But more important, I want to thank the College of Southern Maryland for their support and investment. I also want to give a big shout out to Councilman Curtis Smith of Indian Head for his unyielding support of the EDD and his public acknowledgement of the EDD's effort in Indian Head over the past few years. Thank you, Curtis. Curtis, where are you? Curtis, please stand. Thank you for your support and your leadership in Indian Head. Speaking of leaders, I want to thank all the outgoing county commissioners for the opportunity to work with them over the past three and a half years, and I look forward to working with the new board of commissioners. Now, the question of the day is, how do we close the workforce gap? And what does this mean to the county's continued growth and transformation? We selected this topic for discussion because last year during the fall meeting, workforce and workforce development was a common theme raised during various panel discussions and it was suggested in your survey feedback responses that we discuss workforce issues. To be clear, we were guided by your comments and feedback. Hence, the reason why we now have a workforce study prepared by Towson University's Regional Economic Studies Institute and the Schaefer Center for Public Policy. You will hear and learn more about this study and its actionable recommendations later this morning. Further, you will hear from us on how we continue to execute on the county's five-year strategic economic development plan. As we continue to shape the economic future of Charles County, we must continue to work together and collaborate. Now, admittedly, I know that it can be difficult at times, but as I have said before, those communities that collaborate are communities that move forward and advance, and we will move forward and advance. Today's agenda is reflective of collaboration, and the EDD listening to you and acting on your feedback and comments. The benefit of collaboration leads us to discuss what do we as a community still need to do to cultivate, encourage, and support our business community? And how do we enhance our product, which is the county? One important way to enhance the county is to continue to recognize that the business community and other key stakeholders and investors are county assets. And by working in collaboration with government, and other relevant stakeholders, we can affect the way we live, work, and play. I said this last year, and it remains worth repeating. Since establishing the EDD Advisory Board two years ago, the EDD is more active, and we are increasing our direct engagement with the business community. Would members of the EDD Advisory Board please stand? I know you're here, please stand.
Thank you for your support and advice over the past year. Recently, we established and launched a new initiative, the Business Retention and Expansion Program, BRE. Beginning in the fourth quarter of this year, the EDD's BRE team has already met face-to-face -face with 31 of Charles County businesses. The goal of the BRE program is to determine how the EDD can be of assistance to businesses, listen to their concerns, and work toward providing solutions. Would members of the BRE task force please stand to be recognized? And I know that there are several of you here. Please stand. The role of the BRE task force is to assist in securing support for the program and to provide assistance with strategic planning and related project implementation. BRE task force members are local business owners, educators, and community leaders. Again, thank you for your support and leadership on this initiative. We will report on the preliminary findings of this initiative early next year. Also early this month, PGM launched its new permitting initiative a new permitting software solutions, which you will hear us speak more about later this morning. Now, with that, we will begin our meeting. It is with pleasure that I introduce Kelly Schultz, Secretary of Maryland Department of Labor, Licensing and Regulation. Secretary Schultz was confirmed as Secretary of DLLR in February of 2015. She is a former member of the Maryland House of Delegates, representing Frederick County, and served on the Economic Matters Committee from 2011 to 2015. As DLLR Secretary, she leads the agency that protects and empowers Marylanders by safeguarding workers, protecting consumers, and cultivating a thriving workforce that can meet the demands of Maryland's economy. Secretary Schultz obtained her associate's degree from Monroe Community College in Rochester, New York, and later obtained a Bachelor's of Arts in Political Science from Hood College in Frederick, Maryland. Secretary Schultz, welcome, and the podium is yours. Charles County is hopping this morning. I just got introduced to all of the who's who in, in uh, Charles County, and uh, I have not met the rest of you yet, uh, but I, I'm very grateful to be able to be here this morning to be able to talk about what is my favorite topic, which is workforce development and what we can do as far as being innovative. But I think, first of all, um, I want to thank um, Darrell and your entire team. Uh, it looks as if, from your initial report, that Charles County is really moving forward. And Charles County has a lot of promise when it comes to economic development. But what I do know is that you cannot have economic development without workforce development. And I believe that's what all of you are here to talk about today. And Charles County has had the great honor of being very successful in increasing your businesses in industries such as healthcare, construction, and even retail. But with that growth of those businesses, all of you economic developers out there in the world, understand you bring the businesses and then the businesses come and they say, hey, where's my workforce? So we have to be able to meet that challenge. And what are the opportunities that you have here in this room and to learn about different opportunities in order to be able to achieve the goals that have been set so high by your local public officials, the state officials, and your economic development and private business owners that are working so hard. And we also understand that there's a role that we in the state have to play in order to be able to help you in order to be able to achieve your goals. So that's why all of you are here. I congratulate you and for those that filled out your surveys uh, to make sure that this organization understands that workforce development and being able to fill the talent needs and the gaps within your industries is the number one priority for you. 
I will tell you you're not alone. You're in very good company because this is exactly the number one issue that we hear from every jurisdiction, every county within the state of Maryland. I go to national conferences. It's the number one issue of economic developers, industry leaders, and businesses across the nation. So this is a topic that you are going to be able to understand um, is at the utmost important for the decision makers, those innovative thinkers, which you are now going to be part of. Congratulations. Bet you didn't know that you were going to come here to become experts today, but there you go. Um, I'm really happy to be here. I, I, I think when we talk about workforce development, we start from the bottom. We start from our K through 12 educational system, then we go on to our higher education system, we go into some of our workforce training programs, and we understand that all of that working together is going to be able to create that worker of the future. However, what we have seen is that it's not living up to uh, the demands of the industries that are out there. So what can we do in order to be able to reestablish what that K through 12 system, the higher education system, the training programs, how do we incorporate all of that? And it's through something that Darrell had talked about a little earlier, collaboration, I call it partnerships. We have to be able to put together all of our stakeholders that are in this game of career enhancement. We have to bring them all together at the same time, at the same table in order to be able to develop an ecosystem that's going to be friendly enough and flexible enough to be able to address whatever those needs are. And I say flexible because we don't know what all of those career opportunities and what all of the needs from the industry are going to be in the future. So when we start creating this workforce of the future, we have to be creative enough in order to be able to allow that flexibility for those skills, those credentials, those um, the, the learning process that these students are going through. They have the ability to switch with STEM. STEM occupations of the future. Charles County, your number one growth industry here in the state, or in this county, has been healthcare. How are we going to develop STEM programs so that healthcare in all areas and in all of those occupations and career opportunities in the healthcare industry are going to be, have their uh, demands that are met? I have a, I have a suggestion. I think the suggestion is, and I see a, a good friend um, that also sits down here, he's in the construction industry, and he knows full well, Mr. Guido, about apprenticeship programs. Apprenticeship programs in the past, uh, the, in America, have been really successful at supplying the needs of industries in the construction and the skilled trades. They do it well. They do it well, they train, they provide career enhancement, they provide good jobs. Why can't we have apprenticeships in all other types of occupations in order to be able to fill those demands? Because here what you, here's what you have with an apprenticeship program. You have lifelong learning. You have the advancement of skills and credentialing. You have on-the-job training with an individual business or industry in, in your local area. And you have a pay structure that allows them the opportunity to advance throughout their life. So what we have been successful to do, working with Maryland State Department of Education, uh, local um, K through 12 systems, higher education systems, the Department of Commerce, we were able to develop a pilot program for youth apprentices to be able to directly impact the needs of those homegrown businesses and to be able to retain our best asset, which is our human capital, and have them work right here where they live. Because in Charles County, we know that a good deal of our population here in this county is going out of the county in order to work. That means that your business owners here are going to need to be able to fill that demand that they have within their own county industries. So a youth apprenticeship works like this. You take students that are in a junior or senior year. You take businesses that need um, uh, to grow their workforce with very specific skills. You pay that student a period of time and then they develop a relationship and skills and then they get their academic training with that specific business. The two pilot counties that uh, for two years that went through this program was Frederick County and Washington County. They have seen so much success 
And in healthcare, Frederick Memorial Hospital has created, after the conclusion of the apprenticeship program, they have created positions for their student apprentices to be able to stay with them over a period of time. I just heard that um, the, the medical center, the um, hospital here, they were gonna be starting their first apprenticeship program. I can't see, oh, thank you very much. Working with our office. Because we understand that by, able, by being able to bring people into an industry environment at a very young age, they develop a loyalty and they retain their positions over a period of time. The last thing any business wants to do is have to retrain new individuals over and over and over again. So, so that's one area. The other area is to be able to look at what all of those other local businesses are doing in regards to trying to find what workforce training programs there are for you. How are you looking at workforce development? Maybe some people think that the Department of Labor, which I represent, is the only agency out there that provides workforce development opportunities. Well, in fact, that's not true. There are many other workforce development agencies within the state that help with um, the Department of Disabilities and the Department of Education looking at different types of demographics in order to be able to bring them into your organization and provide those certain types of training. And we realized that this system, this web that we had in state government was really very confusing. So what we decided to do was we were going to help you out free of charge and we were going to provide you the opportunity to go to a website where we were going to answer all of your questions and give you a direct link to any need that you may have when it comes to economic development and workforce development. Last year, the governor uh, put out a, uh, a website, if you have not seen it yet, it's uh, Maryland Business Express. You might want to look that up because that helps all businesses, whether large or small, to be able to guide you to those things that may be most beneficial to you in your business. Whether it be going to the State Department of Se Assessment and Taxation, whether it be going to the Comptroller's Office, knowing what documents to fill out. It's a great, it's a great resource. So what we did with the Department of Commerce, with Secretary Gill and myself and our other Commerce Cabinet, we said we need to be able to do the same type of thing for the, for the workforce development folks because it is a tangled web and we don't want to make it more difficult. We don't want to be a secret. We want to be out there in order to be able to support you, those that are being the job creators. So we created and we um, unveiled a few months ago what we call Business Expressway. The Maryland Business Expressway sits directly on the Business Express website. And I just want to acknowledge Sharon Markey, who uh, is from the Department of Commerce, that worked very closely with our office in order to be able to develop that with the um, State Department of Assessments and Taxation. So now it sits there and you can say, hmm, I have a workforce need. I don't have to try to figure it out on my own. I don't have to go to a million different resources in order to find out who's going to be able to be most beneficial to my needs. I can go to the Business Expressway. The Business Expressway, you go there, you say what your need is, need is, and you are able to find links to all of the agencies in one location in order to be able to satisfy what that is looking for. But that's how we're helping you as the state. We're trying to untangle the web. We're trying to let you know that government is here as a resource in order to be able to help you with what your needs are. The beautiful thing about programs like apprenticeship program, whether they be in the youth program or in the adult program, is that the flexibility that we had discussed earlier is all up to you. You have the most flexibility to be able to create the program that is best for you. The best thing about apprenticeships is it's not another big government program. The best thing about the apprenticeship program is that you design exactly what it is that you are looking for in your workforce and how you are going to create that perfect worker of the future that's going to fit into your organization in the easiest and the most functional way that's gonna satisfy your individual needs. And the state, our sole purpose is to help you to coordinate that. That's it. To bring two individuals together, to bring the stakeholders together that we had talked about earlier, to bring the business environment, to bring that future worker, to bring the educational system to the table 
and help you as a business owner to determine exactly what it is is going to be the most successful option for you. We have a wonderful team of representatives that are in our Office of Apprenticeship. I'd be more than happy to connect anybody here, but I think that in Charles County, when we talk about making sure that we keep our youth in the county to work in their hometown, that is how you're going to be successful. That is how you are gonna to continue to fill the needs of your businesses in both the private and the public sector so that ongoing, you will be able to continue all of the growth and the success that we have seen Charles County economic development over the course of the past four years. I thank you very much for allowing me to be here today. This is very exciting. This is my very favorite topic of anything to talk about, so I could go on for hours and hours. Um, unfortunately, I can't stay, but Darrell, I appreciate the opportunity to be here to at least address this fine group. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Kelly. On behalf of the department, on behalf of County Administrator Michael Malinoff and the Board of Commissioners, have a little gift for you. Oh. It's a heavy gift. Oh, thank you. You want to pull it out and show everybody? I would love to. I'm going to take the chair for a second. Oh. Yeah. A beautiful reminder. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I have to stuff it back in there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Schultz. Next up is my colleague, Jennifer Harris, uh, who will give us a brief uh, update on the, um, the status of the county. And so, if uh, Jennifer, if you would come up, the podium is yours. Although, although I don't have a gift for you. Now. That's okay, we're good, we're good. Thank you, Secretary Schultz and Durrell. Uh, I, that was a wealth of information. I was just continuing to process everything that was just shared, and that was fantastic. Durrell said I would be brief. I will do my best. I am a professional communicator, and I, I've never met a microphone I didn't like, so I'm going to do my best to keep it brief, Durrell. But I do have some prepared remarks. Again, my name's Jennifer Harris. Uh, I am. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today to update you on the state of our county. I'm grateful to be part of the executive leadership team at Charles County Government, which I joined just a few months ago. And although I'm new to this job, I have lived in this area for the past 15 years, and I'm very proud to call it my home. I have dedicated my career to working as a professional communicator in the public sector, and I love to share good news about how our government serves the public every day. Now, I know that's not always the story you're going to hear about government, but that's exactly why I love to be at, at events just like this one, to promote the positive ways that we are all taking on the challenges together and partnering to address them. I'm especially pleased to begin my remarks today by sharing with you that Charles County's financial position is strong. You have already heard about the top bond ratings that we have recently achieved for the third year in a row. And these top bond ratings are essential for borrowing money at the lowest interest rate so that we can pay for the community priorities like schools, public safety, roads, transportation, parks and recreational assets that our community so appreciates and enjoys. I want to point out that we have a new pocket guide to your tax dollars at work, and this quite clearly lays out how we're spending that money and investing it and turning it back over to you. And so I encourage you to get a copy from me at the break if you're interested in learning more about that, but it's a very useful guide. Over the past year, our county has achieved milestones that we can all celebrate and has helped leverage the assets our county has to offer. Our government is committed to transparency and accountability, 
as the centerpieces of an effective government. Our county administrator in the past has talked with you all about the implementation of our high-performing organization model. And I can tell you it is taking root as we have modeled our leadership philosophy and developed core values that exemplify how we execute our work. These values were chosen by our own employees and we have committed ourselves to them. These values include communication, which I love, innovation, integrity, initiative, respect, teamwork, and well-being. These core values define our behaviors and they're integrated into our work culture. Stemming from those values, we are committed to delivering high quality services and are currently soliciting your feedback on our performance. And before you leave today, if you could take a moment and go to our homepage, charlescountymd.gov, we want you to fill out our citizen survey, which is gonna be posted there through November 9th, to tell us what you think. This feedback is critically important because we're going to compare the survey results from this year to our first citizen survey that we did back in 2016 so that we can see how we're progressing. We also use that information to compare and benchmark ourselves against the more than 350 communities around the country who also complete the same survey. We want to use this information to set goals and objectives to evaluate our performance and to report back to all of you on our progress so we can continue to improve our operations and our delivery. Our internal organizational development and evaluation is essential for continually improving our services externally. You have already heard about how our economic development department has been executing effectively to achieve our strategic goals. We are engaged in redevelopment projects. We've established opportunity zones for investment to grow our businesses. And we are going to explore ways that we can close our workforce gap by recruiting qualified candidates who both live and work here. We also recognize that we cannot grow our industry without good infrastructure, especially our transportation networks. In that regard, we are excited about entering the third and final phase of completion for the Western Parkway to create the critical length to Waldorf Station, our new mixed use development on the north side of the county. We're also looking forward to plan improvements on the, south, on the north side of the county with the Route 5 and 301 interchange. Some of you have, may have heard that there's planned improvements going on up there. The state has designated 13 million in funding to help relieve traffic congestion right there in that area. On the south side of the county, we are looking forward to a smoother route from Virginia into Maryland and Charles County through the new Harry Nice, now renamed Mac Middleton, bridge over the Potomac River. With these projects in place, within the next three to five years, traffic into and throughout the county from both sides should become much more manageable for all who live, work, and visit here. Now, speaking of visitors, the county is looking forward to welcoming more tourists to explore our extensive waterfront, to enjoy our bike trails, to see our historical sites, among other things. Our legends, lore, and room to explore message ties this all together in our effort to market the county's current attractions. And we can also envision a renaissance for the rural part of our county with the growth and expansion of our farmers markets with the launch of craft beverage breweries and wineries through a recent zoning text amendment that will allow our agribusiness and tourism plans to grow. And they're intersecting at exactly the right time in a unique and beneficial way. When we're talking about the state of the county, we cannot overlook our quality public schools, our low crime rate, and our parks and recreational assets. Now I came from uh, the director of communications position at Arlington Public Schools and in communications from City of Alexandria before that. So I can tell you, I know inside and out how all of these things work together to make us a great community. Our Charles County class of 2017 achieved a record high graduation rate of 94.74%. This is amazing. These students are graduating in higher numbers and we want them to be prepared for the jobs of the future in areas like we have just meet recently mentioned, science, technology, engineering, and math. Our sheriff's office is ensuring the safety of our growing community with investments in additional officers and technology and equipment like a forensic lab with additional staff that can help us solve crimes more quickly. 
and these efforts have led to a consistently declining crime rate over the last three years. Our parks and open spaces are also continuing to expand with plans for a waterfront promenade on Pope's Creek Trail and the opening of a Port Tobacco and River and Tom Rowland National Resource Area last year. And later today, we're going to be signing a formal lease agreement with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources that's going to allow the county to make enhancements that are much needed at Chapel Point Park. We're going to uh, improve the park, and it's going to provide some great opportunities for outdoor enthusiasts who enjoy kayaking, boating, hiking, uh, biking. A whole multitude of options um, are going to be out there for people to enjoy. We look forward to also opening a new Waldorf Senior and Recreational Facility next year. We want to bring the wisdom of our seniors together with the youth and energy of our families at one location to enjoy recreation in our growing Waldorf area. Pet owners know that their animals are also truly part of our family. My daughter keeps wishing that we would get a dog, and I keep telling her not yet, not until you're old enough to take care of it. But we know that they're looked at as part of families too. And we look forward to opening our very own animal shelter with a site dedication that's scheduled to recognize that milestone next month. All of these attributes are attracting more and more people to move here, to stay here, and to call Charles County their forever home. Our preparation for that growth depends upon improving our technology to keep pace with this growth. I'm pleased to report that we've made a number of investments in technology over the last year including the acquisition of Next Generation 911, which will enhance our emergency response, the launch of online permitting, which will improve our customer service and our planning and growth management department, the implementation of NeoGov, which is an online platform for recruiting and hiring the most qualified candidates efficiently and quickly for our county government jobs, our migration to Microsoft 365 with improved email and collaboration tools, a new rec pass, that allows residents easier access to each of our recreational facilities. And finally, we're looking forward to new budget software that can support more efficient fiscal planning and management next year. These changes are leading the way to a more responsive and effective government. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about how we are actively engaged in telling our story as your lead communica communicator professional. We're focused on proactively sharing information with our media partners to manage the narrative about Charles County. We're integrating our communication platforms to virtually amplify our messaging by live streaming on social media. We're launch launching a new podcast to highlight the people, the places, and the events that make us unique. And we're broadcasting our, or broadening our email newsletters to highlight relevant news to our community that they would need to know. Soon, we'll be taking our message straight to you. We're preparing to hire a full-time community engagement coordinator to join our team and make sure that we're talking to you frequently in face-to-face -face conversations and that we ensure that we're listening to the variety of perspectives and ideas that are out there in this community. I love the diversity in Charles County. And I think that we are uniquely positioned for continued growth because of the strengths and the skill sets of people around here, both in this room and everyone who lives here throughout the county. We know that the workforce gap is real, and we are confident that our stakeholder discussions today will lead to solutions that address it. Our communication strategy for addressing the workforce gap is twofold. First, our own residents need to be aware of the tremendous options for employment that exist right here in Charles County. And second, we also want the region to know about the exceptional advantages that we have to offer to those who make their commitment to locate their businesses here. Ultimately, we want you to walk away with the confidence that you can recruit the talent that you need for your organization or business to thrive here. Our economic development tagline isn't just catchy, it's really true. Our county is close to the capital, but it is far from ordinary. And that's why more people are choosing to live here, raise their families here, start businesses, and make it their permanent home. I'd like to end where I began. As I shared at the beginning, I moved to this area more than 15 years ago because my husband and I viewed it as a wonderful place to settle down and to raise our family. 
I'm pleased to share that this dream has become a reality. One year ago, the only part that was missing for me was time away from my family, because my daily commute to Northern Virginia had doubled to an hour and a half each way from work every single day. What has made a difference when I accepted this job here is that I am mere minutes from my children's school. I'm close to my home, my friends, and my church family. And at this point in my career, I can honestly say that my situation is ideal. Here in Charles County, my talents are utilized to serve a community that I love. My work life is balanced, and I work close to home. And that's a picture that I'm confident that we can sell to more of those who already call Charles County their home, and the businesses who are considering locating here, the businesses that are already here, as we tap into and build upon the tremendous potential that will continue to strengthen the state of our county. Thank you, and thank you for all that you do here in this wonderful county. Thank you, Jennifer. Big hand for Jennifer, please. As I said, the county is moving forward. We are advancing. Next up is um, a, a partnering organization, the Charles County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, under the leadership of Natalie Cotton, the Economic Development Department and the Chamber has become more able to collaborate, communicate, and work together as two organizations. And so with that, I would like to invite Natalie Cotton, Chair of the Board of the Chamber, to the podium. Good morning, Natalie. Thank you for having me. Good morning, everyone. All right. My name is Natalie Cotton. I wear two hats, essentially. I'm the Chamber's 2018 board chair, and I'm also the community and public affairs director at SMECO. So I promised Darrell I'd be brief and that I wouldn't go off on a rogue topic. Um, so Darrell, yes. I will focus on the Chamber, and I'll read from some prepared notes. All right, so it is my pleasure to be with you today representing the Charles County Chamber of Commerce, the largest and most active business organization in our county. Many of you may not know or may not be familiar with the Chamber's history, and for that reason, I'd like to share a few of our highlights. It was in 1956 that the Chamber was established by a group of business owners led by Reed McDonough, who became the chamber's first president. In the 1960s, a business subgroup known as the Committee of 100 came together to seek a broader and more diversified economic development in the county. This evolved into the Economic Development Commission. And during those years, a relationship was established with the now Tri-County Council of Southern Maryland. And the 70s saw the first annual trade show and the Chamber's first transportation committee. In the 80s, the Chamber's first female president, Evie Hungerford, was elected. And as many of you know, Evie continues to be a valuable and active member of our Chamber today. The 1990s saw the establishment of the Reed McDonough Memorial Business of the Year Award, and a concentrated effort was put forth to assist the base at Indian Head during BRAC. The 2000s began with a devastating tornado that hit La Plata. The chamber played an important role in tending to the business the businesses that had temporarily relocated to the trailer city as the main areas of La Plata were known. And on a happier note, the chamber worked on the establishment of a new baseball stadium, developed a sister city relationship with Waldorf, Germany, and moved its offices to their current location at Centennial, on Centennial Street. 
We also changed our president to chair of the board and made our chief staff person, president and CEO in line with chambers throughout the country. Knowing that the chamber could only continue if it had a farm team of sorts, an active and important young professionals group was created, and it's working. One of the principal players in the development of this group, Danny Michael with Old Line Bank, will be the 2019 chair of the board. In order for businesses to get to know and have the opportunity to learn from each other, we have monthly networking events, lunch and learn activities, and large social special events such as our recent highly successful Bounty of the County. We offer a multitude of advertising possibilities, including our annual directory. Members have three free listings in this important resource book. We also have committees covering a wide range of business and community interests to include our legislative committee with studies and comments on statewide matters. Our publications include a bi-monthly newsletter, legislative alerts, and calendars of events. Our website offers an online directory with listings that are a free membership benefit. The Shapiro Group, an Atlanta-based Atlanta market research firm, was engaged by the American Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives to perform a national survey of 2,000 adults to ascertain the general feelings towards Chamber of Commerce mem members when it comes to doing business. Now, one example of the results of the survey is that when customers know that a small business is a chamber member, they are 49% more likely to think favorably of it and 80% more likely to purchase goods and services from the company in the future. I'm proud to be our chamber's board chair for 2018. I've come to know and understand the myriad of ways the chamber serves our business community and our citizens and uh, visitors in general. It is my most sincere hope that our chamber will always be around to help bring good things to Charles County and to help create business and employment opportunities for our citizens. I thank our Economic Development Department for all they do as one of the chamber's very special friends. Thank you, Darrell, for inviting the chamber to speak today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna have a five minute break, all right? And Marcia Keith is the timekeeper, so we will make sure we stay within that time. And then we will come back and Marcia will, will continue our agenda this morning. Thank you. <laughs>